Welcome to another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. I am Lisa Marie Bench, your host with the Moses, and I'm so excited to be here at the Joke Factory at the La Playa, located at 2500 North Atlantic Avenue with Jack Wilhite. Welcome Yay. to the show, Jack. Thank you for having me. I saw him a few years ago, and I waited this long because he was I was in Vegas, you were all over, and so now he's finally back in Daytona, so I got the privilege of getting, being able to sit down and chat with him. Okay, so Jack, you are a totally different act than anybody else. You're kind of like Weird Al Yankovic wrapped up with the 80s cover band. How did this come about? Uh, let's see, I think we started doing character voices a few years ago and then one guitar got in there and the reaction was so different to the audience that I think you just gravitate to what seems to be working. And uh -huh. now, now look at this midlife crisis that we're surrounding us here. <laughs> About a half a ton of gear here now. So I think that's what I'm designed to do. I think comedy, you start out just trying to make it in comedy and just kind of mimic what is considered the norm. And then once you get more comfortable with that, uh, the experts say that what's truly you bubbles up. If you are more of a ventriloquist or you're more of a voice guy or you're a gymnast or even some that do you know, physical comedy as well. For me, I guess it was the musical thing and the impersonation. So obviously you were talented already with the guitar. Well, that might be a stretch, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to play in some high school bands and throughout the years. Had the given, guitar? Yeah, and had given it up for a long time and then felt it was necessary instead of having little fake guitars that I used to use. I thought, geez, if we're doing this, you know, why are we faking it? for the crowd. Let's go ahead and turn it into a high wire act so more crap can break and put live guitars in these shows. You know, I think the audience might give you a certain percentage of chutzpah for at least trying, you know, and just trying to bring that live element to the show. So that was the idea. I think it's neat that men are faking it now. Anyway, <laughs> so Jack, your performances are hilarious, fast paced, unpredictable, and you just never know what you're going to pop out with. I sent you that. Yeah, that's good. No. <laughs> Now, how did you um, how do you pick like your bands? Like you got ACDC, Cheap Trick, John Mellencamp, Guns N' Roses. Do you keep up like with like like now Justin Bieber's hot, One Direction? Do you keep up with the latest, and then you have to study them to get their mimicking down and stuff, or how does that work? I think that's a pretty good question. I I mean, I'm a classic rock guy. Everything from 60s, 70s, and 80s. So first of all, that stuff is interesting to me. And then I, I do kind of an 80-20 rule. I try to figure out what percentage of the audience at 80% or above is going to identify a particular group that I'm doing. And I try to pick a song that they already know as well. The thing is about the current pop stars like Bieber and every new flavor that mm -hmm. comes along, they're here today, they're gone tomorrow. You know, ACDC's catalog is this big, Led Zeppelin's catalog is this big, Aerosmith's catalog is this big. You, you're not going to really go wrong because they're already ingrained in classic the kind, rock history. Yeah. yeah, if I'm chasing my tail doing new stuff, if there was a character that was particularly extreme, you know, that was newsworthy, I might consider that, but uh, I'm trying to keep this on sort of a purist element. We had like a band who was in here last night watching the show, and I mean, you know, if you're goofing around with Justin Bieber and stuff, they'll eat you alive. So <laughs> I'd rather keep it down the rock genre so they might go, well, maybe he's really a rocker, we shouldn't kill him now, but maybe later. <laughs> So now, have you ever met Weird Al Yankovic? Does he know about you? You know, I don't know if he knows about me. I've never met him. One time I did have a booking agency trying to get me to open for him at Carowinds over in, uh, I think that's Rock Hill, South Carolina, right near Charlotte. And I told the booking agency, I said, that's a horrible idea. Why would you send me out as a just a rookie, and this was years ago, uh -huh. in front of the guy that's... You know, the god of that parody genre. But I've never had the pleasure of meeting him. I've read a bunch of things about his agent and how they dealt with their licensing and so forth. But I've never had the pleasure. I hear he's a nice guy. So it I seems like he's him. making a comeback. I've seen him on some. He's doing some live shows. Things. Yeah, I just talked to some friends. Uh, I think they were in Michigan or Illinois. They were going to see him in a theater setting. So I know he's out touring. Which is good. So, well, probably if he meets you, he's going to want a cut. He's uh, going to want a percentage. I'll, no, because I'll be down like Mike Myers uh, doing the We're Not Worthy in front of him, like you know, Wayne's World, because he is the, uh, the predecessor for all parody guys. Well, I loved his Michael Jackson's, like, you know, the Beat It, Eat It, well, he was great. The, the videos he did and stuff. And he's still making them, you know, so Al is the primo dude. So anyway, who else inspires you? Well, I think, you know, in the in the comedy world, um, all the great original comics that we used to see years ago on TV, whether that was, uh, and no offense, but in his day, Bill Cosby was considered a great comic, still mm -hmm. is. 
Alan King, all the ones that would ever show up on the Ed Sullivan Show were obviously great inspirations for what they do. Then on the flip side, you know, I'm a music monkey, so all those bands that I do, everybody from those genres of 60s, 70s, and 80s is all stuff that's still relevant because they still tour. And um, they're just great. That music is still very solid. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just a fan of that music. So it's just being able to do that as part of the show while it's still current. If I was trying to do Buzz, Busby Berkeley tunes that are, you know, somewhat an antiquated, that may not be as relevant, but, you know, rock music is still relatively in the pool because these guys are, A, still alive and they're still touring. So. And 80s rock music is the best. I am telling you, the longer I live, the more I appreciate the 80s music. I love it because it was all about the party. In the 90s, it was all about doom, and gloom, and heroin, and all that, whatever. But the 80s was all just about drinking, let's have a good time, and it was crazy. It's and dance. Good. I'm like, I you got to bring back the dancing. That way everyone I can get in, get in shape again and everything, <laughs> right? We had drugs for that. So we didn't need to actually Okay, so now, you know, Carrot Top has a lot of problems, oh, kind of like you. I mean, how long does it take you to set this whole thing up? Mm, a couple of hours. I mean, Carrot Top is all props. He doesn't have to do anything with the guitars and the, and the musical instrumentation here. And I think he has people do that for him. But for me, it takes about two hours. I've met Carrot Top. Well, cool. He's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to work for the Comedy Zone years ago. Did he? Yeah, okay. that's now he he's, start. He, now he's in Vegas. He's hooked up with the, uh, so smart. the yeah. Luxor. Correct. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly. where I met him. Mm -hmm. And it was neat because when I first met him, he actually invited me up on stage. And I got pictures and everything. This was like six years ago. During the show? Yeah, during the show. Wow. Because he saw me. You hated that. He saw me from afar and said, come here. Who could miss you? Marilyn. Yeah, that's and so I quickly jumped. And that was when I had a Polaroid, okay? So this is even before <laughs> cell phones. And I got pictures with them. And then I went back to see him like just a couple of years later. Oh my gosh, security is so tight. No phones, no cameras, no jumping on stage, no nothing. But see, that's why we appreciate you. Because oh. we can jump up on stage with you. Oh, right? sure. Come on up. <laughs> so now you have a one of a kind no, act. Now, do you ever, I mean, I know you don't ever do the same show twice, but how do you, I guess, fine tune it for each? audience? Do you kind of see who you got first? How many blue hairs? How many young people? Spring chickens? Um, that's actually, it's a good question. I think it, it, the better way to describe that is that the ad goes through phases of development. In other words, there's a certain cast of characters, like right now the majority of my year is one-man shows. I can find one-man shows just by myself in rock clubs, in casinos, or whatever else. And there's a certain number of guys that are in that group. So when I come into a club, I have less time to work with and I can pick and choose from that cast of characters that's rehearsed, that's current, that's in the show. And I may move one or two around based on energy level or recognition factor, but there's not a great difference between them too much. So I don't really go, oh, this crowd needs this, this, and this. I just kind of go, maybe I should start with this one and then go to this one. It's really all about energy level. You know, you don't want to start at too high that you want to end on a high note as well. So, uh, and then the, as that cast of characters changes throughout the year, that just changes who goes where, and that just progresses throughout the year. So, you know, I add and drop characters several times throughout the years so as they either become irrelevant or I just get tired of them. And you have wigs and the whole shebang. Yeah, I'm like a drag <laughs> show, but it's uh, actually a rock show, yeah. I'm trying to look like the guys I'm doing as best I can. Well, and I saw your um, Tennessee School song. Oh, That yes. was amazing, it's on YouTube. Probably and um, why don't have you ever thought about doing a school song for every state? Well, actually, I custom tailored that to like it'll be the Florida State song here. That's the game of that. Is okay. that. That song is identified to try to identify when I'm in a particular state. So if it's in Indiana, we're talking about University of Indiana. If it's in Wisconsin, we're talking about the Badgers of University of Wisconsin. Okay, so are you going to sing it for Florida? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do it as Florida. Okay. I did it last night, so I'll do it again. Okay, good. Because you're trying to get every, you're, you're, right. you're, you know what it is. You're trying right. to make sure that. Right. You're just right. trying to get everybody to have a good time and get into the show. It's not magic. We're just trying to entertain. Come you do on. magic too? No, no, no. Well, sometimes it feels like magic. I don't laugh. And I see that you are touring, so and if, if people want to see where you're going to be at, just go to jackvillehight.com. Correct. And that's two L's. Not to be confused with Doug Height who you sit up here with one L. Oh, okay. Apparently he has a history I don't want to know about. Yes. yes. Did okay. I tell you about that? No. Well, we'll talk later. Yes. <laughs>
anyway, and if people want to reach you, other than going through your website, you're also on Facebook. I am. And then is there a phone number you want to have people call? I think it's easier to do it digitally because then people can get me and they can just be there waiting for me. And never, you don't have stalkers and groupies. Well, you never know. <laughs> Sometimes the phone's not working. Believe it or not, there are spots in the country where the phone doesn't work. So. No way! Yeah. You don't <laughs> I want, go crazy You don't want to go there. But, oh yeah. It's, that sounds like it's roughing it. Really bad. <laughs> yeah. White Sands Missile Test Range and parts of uh, the Appalachia. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Jack. Thank I look you for so having forward me. to seeing your show tonight. Thank you. And stay tuned because we're going to show a, a snippet of the ACDC Act. Oh, okay. And you know what? Hmm. I would like to see you do some Van Halen because I love Van That's Halen. That's coming. It is? I'm working on it. Good. I'm working on it. Okay. Because I'm a big Van Halen. Oh, yeah. I'm working. Yeah, I'm going to have a rupture at the end of the show. Oh, good, good, good. So good. That it's going to take a while to get that up to speed. Okay, great. And be sure to become a subscriber on our YouTube show, Alive and Kicking on Location. Thanks again, Jack. Thank you for having me. And we'll be in touch when we get some selfies. So stay tuned for the big act and become a subscriber. Thanks again. Chalupa!